Welcome back to the Montel Williams Show. I'm here with the lovely and talented psychic, Sylvia Brown. She's taking questions from members of our studio audience in search of predictions and answers to the unknown. We have a question over here, Sylvia. Hi, Sylvia. Oh my God, I'm so nervous. Okay. Uh, anyway, I've been trying to figure out who I should bet on for the divisional playoff. Bengal. It's the Bengal, honey. But the Bengal is already lost. Well, the cosmos works in mysterious ways. Sylvia, such a huge fan. Uh, my question is about Tony Romo and the Cowboys. Oh, you have an interest in the apocalypse, don't you? What? I can see it very clearly. The day that Tony Romo wins the championship, the earth will erupt into chaos. The four horsemen shall ride across the sky with voices of thunder, and from there, the world will come to a fiery end. Well, it's a good thing Tony Romo sucks. <laughs> I have a question for you, Milo. Let's flash forward 100 years and look back. Yes. What will be the most dangerous threat to the human soul? Oh, that's an easy one, Montel. It's the box score, and it's time right now. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple, C's get degrees. Need a long and appropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you, because I probably am. Power cowards for box score. Hello and welcome to the Box Store. I'm Brock in Los Angeles, joined by the Danettes in Milford, Connecticut. McLovin, why was Dan so fired up early on in the show? Oh, because Paulie was pushing his buttons, throwing out stuff. Yeah. You know. It threw down. Some attitude. Hmm. Mr. Paps. Attitude. Papstitude. <laughs> it did get a little attitudinal. I think he was fired up because of that Des Bryant controversy where he came out there with that pass interference call between the Lions and the Cowboys. And as you said, uh, he and Polly got into it early. Yeah, Paul. <laughs> Dean Blandino said to Florio also that there should not have been a penalty on Cowboys receiver Des Bryant, who came onto the field without his helmet. The helmet rule is for when you're on the field already and you take your helmet off. You're allowed to walk onto the field without your helmet after when the play is dead. So anybody can be out there. I can have I can have 35 guys out there. According to Blandino, he said. I mean, everybody's allowed out there, right? Said his actions weren't an automatic penalty. No, no, but everybody can come on the field and discuss something, right? Is what he's saying. He said that Des the rest Bryant came on to discuss the play. So everybody's allowed to do that, right? According to Really? Is that where the NFL wants to go here? Back to you. Hey, come on out. Hey, hey, I, I, I have an opinion. I feel like a ref. <laughs> Back to you. Man, have I been on the receiving end of that? And it's great to see somebody, somebody else getting the treatment. Uh, that's one of Dan's moves is the... Uh, as soon as you open your mouth, he's going to cut you. <laughs> oh, and then he goes, oh, okay, I see. And it, it's almost like, I mean, Paul was reading someone else's statement yeah. and somehow was, like, put on the defensive, like, wait, <laughs> like, see, Paul, and you're a lot better at this because I would have argued with Dan and been like, what do you mean? Like, it, it wasn't even my thought, you know? Well, uh, I think that's what happened there is that Dan wasn't arguing with me. He was arguing with Dean Blandino. Yeah. <laughs> he was, back to you, Dan. Uh, he wasn't arguing with me. I was reading Dean Blandino's statements, paraphrased, and he was arguing with Dean Blandino, the VP of officials, <laughs> Through me, yeah. and I can't really answer for Mr. Blandino as much as I'd like to. Just giving you the statement. I just really giving. It, he's, he's questioning, and I'm like looking. I was like, "Is there anything here that responds to what Dan's asking?" And there was a lot of time to do so. I actually found it yeah. kind of fun. He uh, basically treated Dean Blandino like a Danette there. He pulled a move on Dean Blandino with you as the vessel. That was fun. I thought it was, it was a good time. It was hysterical. And if Dan's fired up, that means we're doing our job, or he's doing his job. Oh, well, Fritzy, okay. why didn't oh, you book Dean oh, Blandino? Oh. We uh, certainly uh, tried. We invited Dean. Uh, we invited uh, Mike Rock. Carrera, and uh, they uh, just were not uh, made available to us. I think they I... were uh, looking to go on uh, easier shows with uh, easier lines oh, of questions. Oh, wow, oh, that's oh. an accusation. That, let's stay, <laughs> Brock, can I stay with that for a second? Oh, now, what reason were you told that Dean Blandino couldn't come on our I show? I was told he was, uh, for, for Dean, I was told he was traveling and he wouldn't be on available. On the Cowboys party and bus? We also, we also oh, called oh, for Mike oh. Pereira, who I was told was uh, under the weather and uh, was sick that he got in 3 and 4 in the morning. Now, Mike appeared on another show Mike a few hours later. miraculously recovered to he go did. on other shows later today. Dean, Dean and Blandino's Mike flight shows. must have ended at 12.01. So we could go on to Mike Florio's show. I guess we were. I guess we were lied. Does to. Does that bother you when you know you're being lied to? And I mean, honestly, yeah. we, I know they can't say that, but Fritzy's job as a booker is he, he deals with stuff that we don't have to deal. And with. it's not like they're coming, not coming on the show because they don't like Fritzy. Right. I mean, oh, this yeah. is none of this so is. Your I, I, fault. I'd rather them say you know he's uh, he he d d doesn't prefer to go on with Dan or he's got That's a. That's tough to write though in an right, email. No, but, to you. but but then they but then the other thing is and they're lying if they're saying right. that someone's sick and then within a few hours later they're on another show or they're not available but they happen to be available for. 
for another show. But they, I'd rather have you then just, just you know, come up, say, you know what, uh, you know, we, we for this particular topic, you know, we rather do this particular show, or the that only, window doesn't work. Or I don't, right? See, it, maybe it is the window, though, right? Because I mean, if they, if people bail on, say, like, oh, sorry, we're not available, and then they end up on the herd. I get super pissed, where it's like, dude, you just totally right. lied to us. You are available, Same time. Right. but you chose to go exactly. somewhere else. And all, all, all of the other shows, the day all of the other shows that they were on were on a totally different time slot. So maybe they were traveling, yeah. maybe they were sleeping. And we've and we've and we've had them both on the show before, and you know, it's not like they're afraid to or don't like Dan or don't want to come on the show. Both right. Blandino Pereira have been guests on the show, and both appeared on other shows after we were off the air. So maybe we give them the. Uh, we wink at that and give him the benefit of the doubt. Well, maybe Blandino was scared. Maybe he could feel the vibe because Dan, while he was trying to light his incense, actually went in there and knocked over that Jim Tunney, or was it an Ed Hockley bobblehead, and that uh, fell from the shelf <laughs> and shattered into a thousand pieces. Uh, Seton, is that sort of Dan's way of sending a message to the, uh, the NFL officials? Oh, man, you are wise there. Very uh, astute observation there. That was certainly... And all of a sudden, Dan just mysteriously drops this thing. It's got a voodoo. The other thing about that, if Dan drops a, a piece of art, an artifact in the hand and it breaks, it's a funny bit for about 10 seconds. If one of us had broken that, oh. we would have had to call in Holy favors so to get a new one, call <laughs> happily. We would have heard about it for probably years. Oh, yeah. And he and he gets genuinely upset when you know because he's got his little hoarding kind of thing. He has all his little yeah. knickknacks and everything in their place. And within seconds, when he comes in each morning, he can tell if someone touched something or moved something. So the you know, the fact that that not only was misplaced but it's actually broken altogether. You know, yeah. he was he was upset for a little while. My grandmother, before. my grandmother. I didn't really realize what hoarding was when I was a child. My grandmother had a nice little house, but she had this. I guess they called it a front room. It was like the show room when you walk into a house, and we were not allowed to walk on the carpet in there or touch anything or make physical contact with anything in that room. Yeah. And I got so used to it, I didn't even think twice about it until I became older and said, like, that's kind of odd. And it, it, there's a lot of people like that that were like, you know, if she saw footprints on her car, on you know, the vacuum, car, oh man! I mean, I could have done anything vacuum worse. your way out of the room, or, yeah. or something even just something <laughs> a label, serious. something facing the wrong way or turned? turned. It's like when we come back and Dan's desk, he comes back from Dan could be a week in Italy on a beautiful vacation with his family, and he comes back and he's like. Why is the New York uh, football helmet turned uh, slightly to the left? What happened here? Yeah, First on, thing that he would come say. Come on, guys. What are you doing while I'm gone? Why is that helmet turned <laughs> counterclockwise by 8 degrees? What do you mean? We're not doing anything. Well, hoarders are very intense. I was watching it last night. They're like, don't touch my stuff. Don't touch my stuff. Well, Dan's early intensity yeah. also brought out a helping heaping of the infamous Fritzy listen face. I mean, can you tell us, is, is there a chicken parm just off the camera? I mean, why are you so dialed <laughs> in at this point? <laughs> I, I look kind of... Uh, it's kind of a listen face slash constipated kind of look. I don't know what I don't even know what I was listening listen to exactly. Face. But uh, I guess that's better than be, you know looking at uh, at inappropriate photos of uh, I think scantily you clad a, women on the. Computer. I think you had a New Year's resolution to try and look at Dan more during. Oh, after that's getting it. least valuable Dan Ed to look like I was paying no, attention. No, 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 no. You know, it's funny though. On the Twitter, somebody sent me broccoli a, a picture of Fritzy's computer that was caught. By one of our cameras, oh, and Fritzy dear. was looking at pictures of girls. I, I actually was, and we were talking about actresses or makeovers or you know, the, the, as far as movie roles and everything. And we, were talking about, we were talking about actors. Yeah, but but actresses too. Charlie's Theron came up, and one thing mm -hmm. led to another, and uh, it's very easy <laughs> to know, get like, distracted uh, once you're a Devil's Googling. Advocate. It was a hell of a film. <laughs> it was. There was right a in there. there was a good moment there in the church, I believe. Yeah, all those oh. things would make you squirm, uh, much like uh, Oregon coach Mark Helfridge when he was on. Dan got him in the hot seat. Oregon. What advice would you give the Tampa Bay Buccaneers who have the number one pick in the draft? <laughs> I'm sure they'll figure that out for themselves. Wait, 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 wait. That don't pass up Marcus Mariota is what you should be saying. Well, Marcus, might he might come back. You never know. Has he told you? I don't know. Maybe. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, he So he's told you he's coming back is what you're saying. Marcus Mariota. I did not say that. Oh, you didn't did say, say that. that. Oh, you didn't say that. No breaking news. <laughs> Oh, no, 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 oh, no, no breaking news. No, oh, yeah. okay, okay. Any NFL teams call you? I don't know. I really don't. Uh, this is, we, <laughs> Wait. We've got, we've got enough problems with the old uh, Buckeyes here that, that uh, I, I don't have time to, to think about that. Anybody close to you receive a call from an NFL team? <laughs> 
This guy's sitting under the desk right now. Is that what it is? Calls. Yeah. Yeah. I wish I didn't know about the man, boy under the desk. Fritzy. Fritzy takes all Fritzy my calls. Fritzy takes all of your phone calls. Uh, yeah, I got a kick out of it. Uh, first of all, you know, getting the little shout out from Coach is always uh, was cool. But the more importantly, Dan and no one does it better than than he does. You know, his uh, you know slick ways of trying to get uh, an answer or some news out of uh, out of our guests and not taking no for an answer and being playful with it, but at the same time being a you know a true journalist and somehow trying to uh, get something out of the coach, but the coach wasn't going to have any of it and he was uh, being coy and it, it was it was fun because he was being playful and uh, coach obviously pays attention to and is a big fan of. Uh, of the show, but uh, the coach was just uh, being very careful with his wording there. As he should be. Well, uh, stick around, please, kids, because after this, we'll ask the Danettes, would they go through a dramatic physical transformation for a movie role? Sylvester Stallone for Fritzy? Sure. Oh, man. All those Rocky movies? <laughs> Huge fan. I almost went Nicholson, but I, I can't put Stallone on the poll. <laughs> He's going to get 1%. It doesn't have to be specifically acting ability. I know he was in that arm wrestling movie. Yeah, and Dan, something. he's not joking. That's the thing. Oh, it's not I know. a joke. I know that. I know that. I was very moved by those Rocky movies, enough so that I would put him ahead of any other actor in the history. Welcome back to Box Score. You guys nearly had a <laughs> litter of puppies when you found out that Fritzy wanted to have uh, Sylvester Stallone on that poll. McLovin, you reluctantly put him on there. How, how shocked are you that he came in second? I'm actually not surprised. The choices <laughs> were Paul Newman, Sylvester Stallone, Meryl Streep, and Dustin Hoffman. Let's face it, if you're not going to vote for Newman, Newman kind of edges out the Hoffman vote. No one admits to Meryl Streep except for Seton. And there's what's so left. So if you're not like a class <laughs> yeah. actor, Process of elimination. if you're more of a like, you know, you like action movies, you're going to like some Sly. And Sly is probably the most successful financially in yeah. the group, right? Oh, for sure. Yeah. And he's probably, I mean, he's beat up a lot more guys on camera I'll than Paul Newman. And definitely than Meryl Streep. And definitely than Dustin Hall. Italian Stallion, baby. Oh, well, uh, Fritzy was so fired up that the Italian Stallion got second place that he went into the box and started doing e. impressions. Because if I can change, and yous can change, and we all can change, next to my kid being born, this is the greatest day in the history of my life. Yo, Adrian, I did it. I say you can't win, Rock. You can eat lightning and crap thunder, kid. Just looking for a reason to do me. A couple things going on here. First of all, it's been four days since we've heard of Rocky, <laughs> so we were due. Yeah. Secondly, I love non sequiturs during uh, imitations where he's doing Rocky for post Drago fight Rocky, and then he switches quickly to Rocky <laughs> to Mickey, if I'm right. I think you're right. Russell. Yeah, because yeah, because that was after he beat uh, Apollo. So yeah, we did Rocky Four, jumped to Rocky Two, jumped to Mickey, and again, they, it's not they they haven't heard the uh, the impressions in at least uh, three or four days, as Paulie mentioned. You know, we were off. We had some time off. It was time for uh, you know me to make everybody crazy with some more Mick, because they just don't get enough of my uh, my Rocky impersonations. Yeah, no Tommy Morrison in, in there either. Okay, well the actor talk didn't stop there. You guys <laughs> talked about Tommy. actors gaining and losing weight, and uh, to uh, Charlize Theron with her complete transformation uh, in Munster. What's the one movie role that you would go through a dramatic transformation to play? How about you, Fritzy? I'm thinking uh, this may be a little bit off the board. Initially, I was, I was actually doing a little research to see who gained or lost a lot of weight, and then I came across Dustin Hoffman dressing as a woman. Don't let's not read into this too much, but I think uh, the Tootsie Reading. Roll is something that uh, you know. I was always curious to see what I might look <laughs> like. Could I? Could somebody do enough costuming and makeup on me to make me look like some very attractive? Would you like? You would like to find that out? Because we got, we I, I know you could do that. Make that but as far, I will literally <laughs> I know you clear the decks. But as far as, far as movie roles, I, you know that that is uh, you know wheels you know, are in motion. Some type of odd curiosity of mine is like, could I be somehow made into like some really hot female? And that's uh, so the answer is no. Tootsie. But we are going to try. <laughs> no kinky boots. How about you, Seaton? Anything? You know, this is an interesting one. Uh, I went with uh, Dirk Diggler from Boogie Nights. Um, dude had great hair, great sort of outfits and stuff. He bulked up. I would love to get in that kind of shape. Uh, the real challenge I think that I would face is actually shrinking my member down to a size <laughs> that would actually fit uh, with Dirk Diggler. Hashtag modesty. Um, but that reduction's possible. It's possible. Nice. They are painful, and uh, recovery is long. Uh, McLovin, how about you? Well, I hate to, to steal directly from Fritzy, but my dream is always to put on that gray sweatsuit, run through the Italian market, <laughs> and up the art museum steps. So go. I'd have to bulk up. I, it'd be cool, mm -hmm. maybe do roids, 
had trainers. <laughs> I would love to become a big Actually, boxer. right above your head is sort of... Stallone. Yeah. You're already right there. Aaron right? Stallone. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Paulie, you got one? I do. I would go with either Dennis Quaid or um, Val Kilmer, Tombstone or uh, Wyatt Earp going for the Doc Holliday role. I, I thought both those guys crushed those roles. They're very different movies, but uh, Doc Holliday, drop about 30 pounds and make myself look more sickly. Longer. Oh, nice, a little uh, tuberculosis. How about, well, Fritzy, I think Huckleberry. the easiest one would for you would be Burt Young, if there was an, ever an autobiography. I mean, that's... See, we don't need that. That's pretty close there. I mean, I that <laughs> see, he's showing a lot of He seems a bit strokey in that shot just, there. I, ref I refuse to accept... A bit uh, strokey. Uh, oh, my a, goodness. Uh, a, a, a resemblance <laughs> to Burt Young. Fritzy's nickname used to be strokey. <laughs> yeah, he's not... <laughs> <laughs> I have no comments on that. <laughs> Oh, That's poor Burt Young. Young. I'm not going to comment on that. Uh, don't go away. We cooked up a little pop quiz for the guys. We are back here on the box score. There's been a little talk about uh, New Jersey Governor uh, Chris Christie being a Dallas Cowboys fan lately. McLovin, you said he got away with something scotch-free. Do you mean, uh, can you clarify that for us, please? Well, I guess I should have said scot-free. Um, and I'm not sure what he got away with. There's some debate. Oh, I know. I said, uh, it's actually Pauly impl implied. He might be in trouble for taking free tickets to the Cowboys game. At least some people are making a story. Pauly pointed out if he'd taken free tickets to a Giants game, nobody would have brought mm. up. He would have gotten off scot-free. <laughs> Okay, well, that may ruin his presidential run. Well, since folks are talking about uh, celebrity fandom, we thought we'd ask the Danettes about celebrities and how they match up to uh, their professional teams. Let's have a little celebrity sports fan quiz. This will be Ooh. Roe versus Roe, and uh, <laughs> let's get nasty. There are steals available. So let's get to it. First up, the back row. Carrie Underwood, not only good at uh, scratching trucks and tearing up the interior, she's a hockey fan. That's right, it's very true. Which team is her favorite? Wow. Not a country, Nashville Predators, not a boat. Dallas Stars. Oh, you think so? Wait, is she from, or is she oh, from Canada, Dallas. like Ottawa or one of those countries? They want us to say, they want us to say Dallas. No, or do we want you to think we <laughs> uh, so yeah. Is she from Canada, like Ottawa, Winnipeg area? I'm not sure. But that the country's be. big up there. Where uh, she could be a flyer. Let's fan. say Dallas Stars. Yeah. Dallas Stars. All right, Dallas Stars it is. Mm. I'm sorry, it's wrong front row, you can steal. <laughs> I'm gonna jump in with the. I'm. A, I'm positive it's the Nashville Predators. Oh. <laughs> you are positively correct. It is the Nashville Predators. There she is with Vince Gill in the background. Because it's like country music. All right. Next up, front row. Paul Rudd's made you laugh several times in movies like This Is Forty. I love you, man. But he's best known to root for this baseball team. Tell us who it is. The Kansas City Royals. Yeah, he, that was just big. That was uh, just recent. They were in the World Series and lost. Kansas City Royals. Back row, it's your turn. Thankfully, Rob Lowe has direct TV and isn't like those creepy guys in the commercial, but what NFL team's jersey may you find in his closet? I know. Do you? Indianapolis Colts. Really? That is Wait, mm. is that just on the show, Parks and Rec? Absolutely correct. Yes. Wow. He's a Colts fan. Phew. Would not have guessed Colts. All right, last nice. one for the front row. Hugh Grant can woo the ladies with his British accent, just ask Divine Brown, uh, and he may do it at a soccer match as well with his favorite team. Which squad is it? Wow. He's got to be a, oh, we a have Manchester to try to steal for United time. guy. I'm gonna, mm, he seems like a Londoner, though. Oh, yeah, what's that Gosford Park area? The uh... Yeah, Notting mm, Hill. What's the yeah, team? Notting Hill. Notting yeah. Hill, yeah. Mm. Notting Hill <laughs> FC. Yeah. Oh, you know what? Seton said Manchester United. Odds on favorite, most people in the world are Manchester United fans. We'll go with it. I'm sorry, that is incorrect. Back row. Liverpool? We you can possibly Chelsea. steal this. All right, pal. Okay, we're going to try to go uh, to tie things up with the. Uh, we're going to go Chelsea. McLovin feels good about Chelsea. The Chelsea's. I am sorry, that is also incorrect. We were looking okay, for. Okay, wait, let's. What? Liverpool. That was my next game. Also, in, oh, also oh, incorrect. Oh. Fulham. Fulham. Fulham Football Club. <laughs> Damn. Oh, I Fulham thinking, FC? Fulham I've been crack. to Fulham. Fulham FC. Uh, well, Dang. Front row, you are the winner. All right, we'll go from that. Stay with us. We're going to go uh, from football to curling.
Oh, we are closed up shop here on the box score. Uh, Paul, you brought up the fact that the uh, NBCSN is gonna have a curling night in America. How fired up are you? Are you gonna have that on your DVR? Oh, I already do, Brock. That's a great point. Uh, but yeah, it's exciting. Curling, we really got into it during the last Winter Olympics. We went curling. We took a curling instructor, took us just a couple miles away from here. And we came back, all four of us said the same four things to each other. I like this sport. I'm going to get into it. I'm going to do it a lot. I mean, join a league. And none of us have picked up a curling <laughs> stick a, since. That being said. going to join a league. Right. I, I, I said yeah. to you guys, it's like, it's, this place is like two miles around. It could we're not, not be easier. It's we're free. We're a league. It's free. And we have not done <laughs> one curl since. Is there a thing called a curling stick? I don't even remember. I don't there's know. Some kind of broom thing. There's a broom the rock. The rock. Curling uh, league. Yeah, I would really hope that we would be involved somehow. We're probably the only people at NBCSN with any curling experience. I would assume that we're part of the, the analyst, uh, analyst yeah, the, the crew, but we haven't been contacted yet on that. Well, you guys do have the skills, but you also have the musical skills because Todd Fritz came up with an idea for a theme song. Do you think Shania Twain would feel honored to do a curling night in America on Why NBC not? Sports Network? Okay. Get her in a hot outfit and she's uh, there on ice? Yes, for Couldn't Shania do something like, wow. Feel like some curling. Maybe. I think it's something to think I, about. I, 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 I don't know any Shania Twain songs. I think it's Hurling. Oh, come on. I think it's I Hurling Night in America. <laughs> <laughs> I must say man would feel like some curling, but it wouldn't have made it too any better. It. Yeah, that would say it. it was still oh, a disaster. Oh Were you disappointed in me there with that? You I was thinking of a Shania Twain song, and I'm like, man, feel like a woman. So I'm like, I could, you can't picture that for Curling Night in America? Are you more man. embarrassed that you made that joke on national TV or that you knew a Shania Twain I'm song? I'm far more embarrassed that I was that I knew immediately a Shania Twain song than actually well, it's like uh, a performing per it. Perfect intersection of Fritzy's interests. Pretty women, terrible pop music, and <laughs> pregame. It's right there. Anything, pregame music, mm -hmm. this is all it's life. perfect, perfect, <laughs> horrific storm is what I shared. I apologize. Uh, Seeing if I told you for the debut episode we were going to have a uh, Danette Curly Night in America challenge, would you be on board for that? Oh, hell yeah. I already am. Right now, I'm I'm in. Definitely. And I know these guys. Yeah, absolutely. we're all in. Definitely. We're all in. I'm well, sharpening my curling stick right now. I'm going to pick out my crappy looking outfit right now. As, we, as soon as we're done with this show, I'm going to find the most horrible clothes I can to wear. I'll loan it to you. <laughs> Well, uh, Fritzy, who would be the strongest on this uh, curling team of the Danettes? Hmm. Based on what I had seen and competitive nature, and if you add all those things in, I would probably give the edge to Paul. Yes. Um, I thought Seaton had a nice Seaton was better than me on our debut uh, inaugural run. I, I don't know what it's called when you're first letting it go. Because you never did it. That was that was hard. That was, that was a very difficult time. I was trying some kind of geriatric walker. Thing. I don't know what I was trying to accomplish. There. I'm going to blame the hernia from uh, four, five, six, seven, eight years ago. Okay. But uh, but Paulie uh, looked like he kind of knew what he was doing a little bit there, and I was just uh, proud to show off my Twilight Zone sweat. Well, that, that is true. If there is one person who has been practicing curling, it's definitely Paul. There's no because for yeah. knowing one day the Winter Olympics are coming back around and we're going to start curling, and he's right. just going to dominate. Hey, I don't know when the Winter Olympics start. I'm guessing next winter, but uh, I'm going to start practicing pretty soon. That is quite a little frog thing you got going there, Fritzy. <laughs> by, by the way, if, if we ever have technical <laughs> issues awful. on this show where we're just off the air, would you show a loop of Fritzy curling? I, I think ratings are double. I just could not figure out how to get in that position. Took yeah, let's do it. Fritzy, why don't you tell us who's on tomorrow with that plane under? Can we do something like that? Is that too complicated? <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I hope it's a short clip. Uh, we will have uh, Rich Eisen on the program tomorrow. What show does he host? He hosts the Rich Eisen show, mm -hmm. and he's Michigan uh, an NFL Network fine host. Um, because that's the only guest so far tomorrow, although we may hear from one or more baseball uh, Hall of Famers. Kurt Warner Thursday, Joey Harrington just mm -hmm. uh, committed to joining us Friday, leading up to Monday's uh, national title game, being an Oregon alum and a uh, Fox College football analyst. So that's where we're at right now. Fantastic. Thank you, gentlemen. Uh, thanks for watching the box score. Catch us tomorrow at 3 p.m. Eastern right Bye. here on Audience Channel 239. If you're on the go, uh, podcast is available at iTunes or podcast1.com. Let's get curling, kids. I don't know a lot about sports, but I can drink a lot of beer. My motto is simple. C's get degrees. Need a long, inappropriate hug? I'm your man. I think I'm smarter than you because I probably am. Hey, thanks for watching the box score. Holy cow!